In the spectrum of bikes, the Drop Bar Bike Packing Bike is one that I think few brands get right right out of the box. That is until today. In this video, I'm going to review the Stargazer by Tumbleweed, find out what I like and dislike about it. The Stargazer is the second bike by our friends over at Tumbleweed. The first one was the Prospector, which was the all-terrain flat bar roll-off specific ultra rugged bike packing bike. The Stargazer in comparison is its drop bar cousin. So it has a geometry that's better suited to running drop bars. Also, it does away with the eccentric bottom bracket and is designed to be used with a derailleur system. The frame and fork are made out of steel and it has all the mounts. Looking at the front fork, it's got mounts for a three pack mount for low riders. It's got eyelets so it can run supports for a platform rack or a rando rack. Basically a ton of utility in the front. The main triangle has mounts for three water bottle cages. It is lacking mounts for a top two bag, but in the rear, it's got plenty of eyelets so you can run both a rear rack and fenders if you want. In terms of wheels and tires, you can do a 27 plus build. This particular one is built around a 29 by 2.8 inch tire. Hubs are the super reliable DT Swiss 350s. The rims on this one are WTB, although on the web listing it does say race face, so I think it depends on what's available. The tires are the Maxxis Icon in 29 by 2.2, and it's got a pretty good all-rounder tread. Definitely biased towards a little bit more dirt, but rolls reasonably well on those pavement sections. Brake mounts are flat mount, and the calipers are some cable actuated ones by Tektro. Moving on to the controls, this is where things get interesting. You've got some SRAM Rival 22 that have been modded in some pretty interesting ways. I'll get to that a little bit later. The handlebar is by PNW, it is their Coast handlebar, and I believe it's either 48 or 52. It's got a lot of wingspan on this one. The cockpit is finished off by some handlebar tape by Camp and Go Slow. Love this pattern. The cranks are by Race Face, and it has a 32 tooth chain ring, which I think is totally reasonable for bike packing. Moving to the rear, it's got a generously ranged 10 to 52 tooth SRAM Eagle cassette with, with a SRAM GX Eagle rear derailleur. The Eagle eyed among you will note that this shouldn't work with drop bars out of the box, but it works in this instance because the folks at Tumbleweed modded the front rival brifter with the ratio internals. So you get 12 speeds and the correct cable pull to work with the Eagle rear derailleur. So out of the box, you've got mullet gearing. But not only that, the left shifter has also been modded, so it is actuating the PNW Rainier dropper post. And what I love about this is that typically these are hacks that you would have to do aftermarket, costing you time and money. But if you order the bike from Tumbleweed, it's done for you. Dropper post ready with mullet gearing already set up. So by now you guys know my dimensions. I'm about 5'9 with a rather short leg length at 29 inches. I decided to test the size medium, figuring because it does have a sloping top tube, it should work out okay. And it did for me. The, the total weight on our scales with pedals and cages came out to a respectable 28 pounds. Not, not the lightest bike out there in the spectrum of bikes, but within this class of bike, the drop bar mountain bike, it's, it's about par, if not a little bit better. I've definitely tested some which are closer to 30 pounds. So it's nice to see that this is in that 28 pound range. So enough of the boring stuff. How does this bike actually ride? You guys know me, I tend to ride smaller frames, usually built around the 650B by 48 to 50 millimeter standard. So, so hopping on this bike, it felt really tall, almost like throwing a leg over a horse. Part of this is the larger wheel and tire size, but also the higher uh, bottom bracket designed specifically. So when you take it on rooty and rutted trails, you're not slapping the pedal everywhere. All that to say that it did take some getting used to initially, although after a couple of weeks, I adjusted just fine. Probably the adjective which I think best describes this bike is smooth. On flattish gravel terrain, the bike just steamrolled over everything. The bike has a calculated trail in the low 80s, so definitely higher than your typical gravel bike, yet not so high as a mountain bike or some drop bar mountain bikes out there. To me, it's really straddling that fine line between say gravel bike plus handling and full-on drop bar mountain bike handling. All that to say that even with its bigger wheels and tires and slightly slacker head tube angle, it still feels somewhat neutral. Definitely on the higher trail side of neutral, but in that neutralish range. So on gravel double track, where you have to kind of cross that gravelly line, you'll feel nice and stable and you won't be thrown around. Going uphill, it was a surprisingly good climber. 
It didn't have the jumpiness of, let's say, a shorter chainstay bike. So when you climbed, there was this kind of smooth upward progression. But at the same time, because it has that kind of neutralish high trail uh, handling, it wasn't super drunken goatee. By that, I mean, it didn't exhibit lots of wheel flop. There definitely was like the tiniest bit of it, but it wasn't as floppy as say the Otso Fenrir, which I just reviewed a couple weeks ago. So it still handled fairly neutral. I know in talking with Daniel, he actually tried out different rake forks and he landed on this one because he liked the riding characteristics. And to me, if you're coming from more of the gravel bike world, then it won't feel too unfamiliar. When descending, again, this bike was super stable. A higher trail kept the wheel going straight without getting deflected by baby heads. The overall wheelbase and the longer chainstay length also added to the sense of stability. So if I were to sum up the handling, it would be smooth and stable. So what are the likes and the dislikes? The first big like is that this is finally a drop bar bike packing bike that is specced out with, without you having to add something else later down the road. By that, I mean it's already got mullet gearing. You don't have to do any hackery or add other doodads to have it accommodate lower gearing. Same thing with the dropper post or making the dropper post work with a drop bar shifter. They've done it for you. Another big like is the handling. It's super smooth and super stable. Big plus if that's what you're looking for. One thing I really appreciated was that it didn't have a overly wheel floppy front end. So if you want a more neutral handling bike, something that handles a little bit more like a gravel plus plus bike and less like a full on, you know, modern progressive mountain bike, then this bike is for you. And of course, I love the utility. It's got all the mounts, low rider, three pack mounts, rear rack mounts, all the utility you could ask for. In, in terms of dislikes, there's actually very few. I think Daniel nailed the handling, he, he nailed the gearing, all the kind of things I would want in a drop bar bike packing bike. If there was one thing I wasn't a fan of exactly, it was the Tektro brakes. I think if this were my bike, the one upgrade I would do is swap them out to some Paul clampers. And then it would just be chef's kiss. So who is this bike for? I think it's an interesting bike because to me, it really straddles that edge of uh, what a gravel bike handles like and true drop bar mountain bike handling. So I think if you're going from the gravel bike world, but want something more capable, something that you can take on, on chunkier trails and roads and double track and carry a bunch of gear, but you don't want a super floppy front end, then this is your bike packing bike. The Otto Fenrir that I reviewed, definitely capable, but handling wise, it, it was definitely both feet in the mountain bike category. This one, not so floopy floppy on the front, which is nice. So I would say for off-road touring on gravel roads, occasional trail, this would be an awesome bike. But because of its high neutral handling, I'd also consider it for those really chonky gravel events where, where a gravel bike would be a little bit underbiked and this would get you a little bit closer to that mountain biking world without the handling getting all messed up. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm, I'm really getting granular here with the handling, but I think that's what makes this bike really interesting. So, so there you go, Tumbleweed Stargazer. The drop bar mountain bike for people who don't want it to feel like too mountain bikey. So that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think of this bike. If you guys have any questions, leave those in the comments below. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful and a little bit entertaining. And if you did, consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or buying some of our new stem caps and stickers in the web store. As always, everybody, keep the supple side down.